One of the worst things about getting into night vision, aside from just, you know, all of it, is shopping for an IR laser. The market for IR lasers just straight up sucks. You've got companies that refuse to sell IR lasers to civilians, companies that grudgingly sell IR lasers to civilians, and companies that are actually just one guy in a garage with a 3D printer who will enthusiastically sell IR lasers to civilians. Luckily, the market for civilian IR laser modules seems to be improving, thanks in large part to those guys with 3D printers working out of their garage. Phantom Hill is one such company that we've talked about multiple times in the past, but today we're going to be talking about lasers from U.S. Night Vision. These laser modules are produced for and branded by U.S. Night Vision, which is an online night vision retailer, but they're actually made for them by a little company called 3EIR, which, you guessed it, seems to be a guy in a shed with a 3D printer. I have a really hard time not pronouncing the words I see in front of me, so I usually refer to these as the Designate IRs, even though I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be just Designator. So bear with me while my pronunciation fluctuates throughout this video as I finish my beer. The first version of the DIR was the Dual Beam version, which had a co-aligned visible and IR laser in one module. The DIR series lasers have some common design elements that set them pretty far apart from other lasers on the market. The bodies of these laser modules are wide and flat. They hang off both sides of the rail, but they sit extremely low, so they do not intrude into the view of your scope very much, and also they are controlled by a single fire button on the back of the unit, which is placed very well for easy activation, left or right-handed. Just from an ergonomics perspective, the design of these things is essentially perfect. The dual beam module was followed up by the DIR-V, which adds a Vixel-based illuminator off to the left side of the device. The use of a Vixel-based IR illuminator gives the DIR-V an extremely powerful and clean illumination pattern, similar to a MAL or a D-Ball D2, while still being a civilian legal device. If you want to see a full review of that laser module specifically, there's a link in the corner to the video that BrassFax did about it. There were a few quirks and teething issues with the early versions of the DIR lasers. These things are 3D printed and they are attached with a cross bolt. On the original ones, the clamp on the opposite side of the main body of the laser was also 3D printed, so you're basically using a metal cross bolt to pinch two pieces of 3D printed plastic together. Unsurprisingly, if you put too much torque into it or you got it nice and tight and then bashed it against something, the plastic would probably break. Also, the fire button on the back of the device, although very well placed and very easy to use and having a surprisingly solid tactile click, was not the most robust. It had kind of a weird suede feel to it. Not the sort of material that holds up to abuse and field conditions. Since the original release of the DIR-V, US Night Vision or 3EIR have paired up with Arisaka to add some nice improvements to the design. Currently, you can buy an upgraded version of the DIRV direct from Arisaka with the upgrades already installed. One of them is a metal clamp. The body of the device is still 3D printed plastic, as are the recoil lugs, although there's a bunch of them, so they actually do a pretty good job of locking into the rail. Also, when you torque the clamp down, all the pressure that would have gone from the cap of the screw into a plastic 3D printed clamp is now going into a metal clamp, and then the way the clamp is anchored on the other side is pretty much as robust as it needs to be. So that's a pretty big improvement right there. The other change is the use of Arisaka's button design instead of the old fire button on the DIR. It's a nice rubber button, just like the one on Arisaka's momentary tail caps. The newest laser in the DIR lineup is this, the DIR-1. As the name implies, this is a single beam laser, no co-aligned viz, no illuminator, making it one of the smallest and lightest laser modules on the market. As the name DR-1 implies, this thing weighs in at a scant 1.1 ounces with the battery installed, which might sound like a very suspiciously low number, seeing as a CR-123 by itself weighs a little over half an ounce. How can this be, you ask? Well, they got the number wrong. Not totally sure how that happened, because not only is it on the website, but it's also on the packaging and also on their Instagram when they advertise for the device. But yeah, this thing does not weigh 1.1 ounces with a battery installed. It weighs 4.1 ounces with a battery installed. I think somebody's got a scale out there with a failing seven-segmented display. Okay, well, pernicious typos aside, the DIR-1 is a very lightweight, very compact laser unit. It's also extremely simple. The DIR-1 has no on-off switch, and it has no double-click function to stay on. It just has a momentary-only fire button at the rear. Like the Dual Beam and Vixel Illuminator versions of the DIR, this one still has a remote switch port on the back. These things take standard crane switches, pretty much like every other laser on the market. 
So the DIR1 being very small, very simple, having the remote switch capability and not having a feature where it will stick on if you accidentally double click it or send a phantom double click makes it a pretty surprisingly good candidate for pairing with a vampire light or other IR illuminator. As someone who has tried almost every permutation of that setup, I still don't think it's a good idea for almost anybody, but if you were gonna do it, this might be how to do it. Again, not an endorsement. The other lasers that work best in that configuration are the Steiner Otal C and the Holosun LS117 IR. Like the Otal C, the laser emitter on the DIR series is offset to the right, meaning that they will clear a front sight base if you need them to. The Holosun LS117 IR is directly in line over bore, which is convenient, but may not work for you on all rifles. In terms of price to performance, the DIR1 comes in at approximately 600 bucks retail, just direct from US night vision. That means it's about twice as expensive as the LS117AR, but cheaper than most Steiner Otel Cs since the price on those went up by quite a lot lately. The Otel C though does come with a lens cap cover and it has a switch on it so you can turn it all the way off or you can turn it into constant on mode if for some reason you really need your laser to stay on. With the DIR1, there is no way to get it to stay on even if you want to. The other concern I have is parasitic drain. I have never ever encountered a laser that didn't have parasitic drain when it was in standby, and I've never encountered a laser that had parasitic drain when it wasn't. The DIR lasers are powered by a single CR123 battery, and US Night Vision rates the runtime of the DIR1 at 25 hours. So it is not a power hungry device, and even with parasitic drain, this thing should last a very long time. The last thing to touch on before we wrap up is the kind of inconsistent power levels of the DIR series. These are nominally unrestricted lasers that civilians can just go buy on the internet without law enforcement credentials. What that usually means is slightly less than 5 milliwatts for the output of a visible laser and slightly less than 0.7 milliwatts for the output of an infrared laser. The reason I think that they're slightly less is because probably manufacturers don't want to accidentally have their manufacturing tolerances put them over the limit and into potential legal jeopardy. For some reason that I don't quite fully understand, the output of the dual beam DIRV, or at least the relatively early production version that I had, was also 5 milliwatts of infrared output. That is a lot of output for an IR laser. It's about six times more than the high output of any civilian legal laser, like a D-Ball, I-2, D-2, A-3, etc. So that's, uh, yes, yeah, a good D-2 on the paper. And D-I-R on the paper. Holy oh, shit. Oh, man, that's not the same. Here, up on the trees. Yeah, no. There's no competition, no comparison. They may have corrected that on the newer production versions of the dual beam, at least on their website, it shows it as having a 0.7 milliwatt output on the IR laser. On the one hand, you might be like, ah, oh, man, I really wanted that overdriven laser output, but it was actually kind of difficult to use at close range. And by close range, I mean anything that you might actually realistically engage with night vision. There's just a heck of a lot of bloom coming off of a 5 milliwatt IR laser. My theory for why this happened is that perhaps 3EIR misunderstood the laser safety classification system. Almost all IR lasers, for civilian market at least, are rated as Class 1, which is kind of an older version of the laser safety system. Class 1 laser safety, as it applies to infrared lasers, means 0.7 milliwatts maximum. Class 1 is apparently considered completely eye safe because no matter how long you stare into the germanium abyss of your infrared laser module, it will never hurt you. Not that I'm suggesting you try it, that's just my understanding of what that safety system is supposed to mean. The DIR series lasers are rated with the newer system of Class 3R, also sometimes referred to as Class 3A, maybe that depends on what country you're in. Either way, that's supposed to be a less than 5 milliwatt output. However, as far as I can tell, Class 3R is not supposed to be used for infrared lasers at all. It's just for visible lasers. So maybe there was a bit of a misunderstanding there. 3E IR set the output power of their IR laser to 3R rating instead of Class 1, which is what Steiner uses, for example. It's also the IR designator output on the Phantom Hill CTF 1 and 2. Regardless, the output of the DIR-1 is still shown as a Class 3R restricted laser, but the output has been reduced in rating, at least by US Night Vision or 3EIR themselves, down to less than 3 milliwatts. So they've managed to tone it down a little bit and the bloom's not that bad, but I'm a little confused, or maybe they're a little confused, about how laser safety works. 
whatever. I don't think this is worth getting concerned about because you can still give yourself bootleg PRK surgery with a $10 cat toy laser from Amazon Prime. Anyway, what were we talking about? The U.S. night vision DIR series is getting better and better. The partnership with Arisaka brings some much-needed improvements, and these things are a pretty serious contender in the market. It's still a new company, still relatively unproven, and the prices of their lasers certainly don't reflect that total lack of track record. The DIRV is currently selling for about $2,000, and almost all the reviews out there have been of versions that didn't work very well. But they are improving, and the civilian market for IR lasers needs as much fresh blood as it can get. If you've got 2000 bucks on hand and you want to take a bit of a gamble, the DIRV is basically the best laser you can get right now, not just in terms of output, but also in terms of design, layout, ergonomics. The dual beam and single beam versions of the DIR, I think, work a lot better as a backup laser or something that you put on a gun that you really don't intend to use with night vision that often, but you'd like to retain that ability to designate targets and maybe engage them actively with night vision, you know, if push comes to shove. Yeah, 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 okay, you can pair those with a standalone IR illuminator or a vampire light, fine, but you shouldn't do that, so please stop doing it. Especially don't do that thing where you ask me, hey, should I do this, and then I say, no, you shouldn't, and then you say, well, what I meant to say was I already did it, and I just would like you to tell me it's all going to be okay, because I can't tell you it's all going to be okay. It's not. You wasted a lot of money on some stupid jank. Stop doing that, or at least ask me before it's too late. Thank you guys very much for watching, and thank you for your honest inquiries on Instagram. You know, where you ask me a question that I can actually conceivably help you with, because the final purchasing decision hasn't actually been made yet. Anyway, if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so by subscribing, because then you get to watch more videos. And if you don't subscribe, you don't get to watch more videos. That's the rule. I didn't make that rule. YouTube made that rule. And YouTube knows a little bit more about YouTube than you or I. You can also support me more directly by checking the links in the video description to Subscribestar or to my Linktree page where you can find affiliate sponsorship links as well as social media stuff. There's also a Discord server that you definitely shouldn't join because apparently getting through the airlock is too difficult and it makes people upset. If I see one more fucking Reddit thread about that, I swear to God. Anyway, thank you for watching. I love you guys. I don't say that enough and I'll see you next time.